Woo, Proverbs 19, verse 10 to 18. Guys, welcome to Waking with the Word. Here we go. It is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury. How much worse for a slave to rule over princes. A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory to overlook an offence. A king's rage is like the roar of a lion, but his favour is like dew on the grass. A foolish child is a father's ruin, and a quarrelsome wife is like a constant dripping of a leaky roof. Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Laziness brings on deep sleep, and the shiftless go hungry. Whoever keeps commandments keeps their life, but whoever shows contempt for their ways will die. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and he will reward them for what they have done. Discipline your children, for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party to their death. I want to start talking about verse 11 today. A person's wisdom yields patience. It is one's glory to overlook an offence. Now, it doesn't often feel like glorious does it, to overlook someone's offence, to actually say it doesn't matter when it's offended us, it's hurt us, so it does matter. And the word in the Hebrew is not actually offence but transgression. So this doesn't mean you've been offended. As I've often said, offence is never given, it's always taken. We can choose to take it or we can choose to leave it. But the word is transgression. So someone has done something here to hurt us. And actually in the Hebrew, the word is anger over a transgression. And it says that it is to our glory to pass over or escape from our anger over a transgression. So we're not escaping from what they've done. They've still done it. And we're not escaping from an offence that we've taken we're literally not taking the offence. They have hurt us, but we're going to step over our anger. We're going to escape our own anger. Pass off, in the Hebrew, has connotations of escaping. So it's like walking on stepping stones, and then you see one, and it's red, and it's evil, and it's nasty. And actually, you should step on it, because it's going to get you across the river. But if you step on it, it's going to sting you as much as anyone else and even more so. So you say, I'm just not going to step on that one. And you jump to the next one. And it might be a little bit more work. It might be quite hard to bite your lip and make that step across, above and over, away from your anger. But you do it. And you do it because you know that anger is like a nasty spike. When you hold it in your hand, it's going to hurt you too. It's going to dig deep into your soul and it's going to make that transgression even worse, even bigger because of what it's now done to you. I did this because you did that. Wouldn't it be great if we could have as much self-control and trust in the Lord that we don't do the this even though they've done the that? There was a time when someone hurt me and as they walked to their car, they said to me, I'm sorry that you were offended. Now up until this point, I hadn't bitten back, I hadn't jumped, and I really had tried to stay in love. But the moment they suggested I was offended, then I lost it. And I said, I am not offended, how dare you say I'm offended, it's what you've done to me. That point, that moment, that's when I took the offence. I took the offence at them saying I was offended. I truly believe that never taking offence is only something we can maintain with the Holy Spirit. I used to work with a pastor and she was a dear lady but she used to be very strict and very hard and one day she gave me something to do that was completely the opposite to what she'd already asked me to do and she said to me not offended are you because we don't have offence here. I used to feel that in some ways this was her way of being able to change things or do whatever she wanted and when she knew it really was hard for people She'd say, we're not offended here, we don't get offended because we've got the Spirit of the Lord. And in other words, if you did at all show any upset, then you were offended and you weren't walking with the Lord. 
This isn't how God wants us to be, telling other people that they shouldn't be offended. But he does want us to focus on our own hearts and our own walk with him. He wants us to step over those stepping stones of anger towards other people's transgressions. And this verse says it is to our glory. Now, the word glory there actually means beauty or jewel. So it means majesty as well. It will be our crowning glory. It will be a beautiful thing about our countenance and character that we have been able to control our anger and to give it to God and to step over that anger when someone has transgressed towards us. Let me repeat, it doesn't mean they have not transgressed. It doesn't mean they haven't hurt us. It doesn't mean it isn't their fault. But it means you know there is no point in getting angry. This is something, and it's took me a long time to realise this. A very, very long time. When you react to something... It only makes it worse. Now, this doesn't mean there won't be times when God wants us to speak to people. It doesn't mean there won't be times when God wants us to show people a better way or to explain why we're hurt. But what it does mean is he never wants us to repay evil with evil. He never wants us to be the one who thinks we can sort everything and everybody out. Because in the end, we ostracize ourselves from all kinds of people and they don't want to know us. The word wisdom in verse 11 is actually prudence, which is God's wisdom in action. And the word patience means long. A person who defers to God's wisdom and puts it into action will be able to outlast a long time. They'll be able to live under the thing that's hurting them for a much longer time. And it will be a beautiful thing that they are able to step over their own anger and not to action it, even though they've been hurt. In other words, being hurt won't hurt your character. It won't hurt your reputation. Whereas so very often we get hurt and then it hurts our own reputation and it hurts our own character and it hurts the way that we react. Verse 14 says, Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. Now I've often thought this means that when we want a spouse or when we're looking for companions, whatever it might be, to find the ones who are prudent, the ones who put put God's wisdom into action, that means that God will bring them to us, that they'll just suddenly appear. But actually, I think it's also a warning and an encouragement and a challenge for us in our own lives. Because people don't just become prudent. They don't just, you know, suddenly appear prudent. We're not just born that way. We become that way. When we're born, we're sons and daughters of disobedience. We're selfish and we only really know what this world teaches us and ourselves. As we walk with God, then we begin to hear from him and we have the opportunity to put his wisdom into action and to become prudent people. But if you're someone who's looking for a prudent partner, a prudent friend, a prudent wife, a prudent husband, whatever it is, I want to turn it back on you and I want to say, what about you? Are you prudent? Are you putting God's wisdom into action? And shouldn't you be more focused on you? And so that when you're a companion or you're a friend or you're a brother or you're a sister, you're a prudent one. Because prudent brothers and sisters come from the Lord. And that means you become prudent as you walk with the Lord. Your prudence comes from the Lord. And it is God's favour to give you prudent companions in this life. That's a favourable thing. God will bring you into the midst of other people who can share with you his wisdom and his prudence. An iron can sharpen iron and you can befriend and love and care for one another. But your gift from God is your own prudence. Your gift from God is your wisdom. I've often spoken about Joyce Meyer. She's a great encouragement in my life. And she says that when she married Dave, she wasn't prudent. But through walking with the Lord, she's become wiser and wiser and wiser. And God has given Dave a wise wife, a wise and godly prudent wife to live with. And that has been God's favour. But Joyce wasn't that way when he married her. Did he sit and say this isn't the favour of God? Not that she's ever said. But he was calm and gentle, peaceful and long-suffering 
and he had to step over those stepping stones of anger probably many, many times, look the other way, and his prudence, his, God, his wisdom in action, became long-suffering and patient, and he lived under it. And you know what? It helped her, and it taught her. And as she walked with the Lord, she became that prudent wife that he would have longed for. And now they serve the Lord together, learning and growing every single day. Like she says, she's completely honest. I heard her say once that when they got married, in the wedding vows, we know it says, and in the Bible, it says the two become one. And she says, I used to think that straight away you became one and you lived together. She said, but actually it's a becoming one and it takes years. As we become one with the Lord, which also takes years, we become prudent. We learn to be the sort of people and we just become the sort of people that he wants us to be. Things can be given to us like houses and wealth. We can inherit them from our parents. But what we inherit through Jesus is the Holy Spirit. We inherit that and we inherit his wisdom. And that comes from the Lord. That is our inheritance so that we can in all of our relationships be committed and be wise and be patient and be calm and be loving. And so the beauty that I long for today and the beauty that I long for all of you to have is that beauty of the Holy Spirit, but that I would walk with him and allow him to action his character in my life and that I would put his wisdom into action and that I would overlook what this version of the Bible terms as offences, that I would overlook transgressions done to me where I have every right to retaliate. I would say, I'm not taking that offence. You're giving it to me, I'm refusing it. I bless you with forgiveness. I bless myself with forgiveness. I step over that red stone and I keep walking forward on my way with my Lord to the end destination that he is taking me to. And so today in the Come Back to God campaign, we pray for my dear brother, Roger. He's been traveling a lot these days and months. He is the son of the man who started our missionary society and also the son of the current director, Dennis and Marilyn Patterson. Dennis went to be with the Lord about 13 years ago now and Marilyn has been the director ever since. Roger is their son and he works alongside the work sometimes, but he's also an opera singer. He's been practicing hard and performing. Please pray for good health and for God's protection on his voice. The voice is like any muscle and it can be strained and affected by many things. Pray that as God uses his servant in the ministry of singing, he would protect his voice and use Roger to witness to those he meets. What do you do for a living? Would you like us to pray for you? We would absolutely love to pray for you, that you may get a job or that you'd be promoted or that you'd be able to sustain your job. We'd love to pray for your finances. We'd love to pray for your family, your friends, anything that you want prayer for, hit the message button and get in touch. We love you lots and lots. Have a good day. God bless you. and.